What's good, y'all? It's your boy Chris, also known as the Creative Chip, and I'd like to welcome y'all to the the Creative Flow. I'm I'm still trying to figure out the routes that I want to go with for these behind the scene videos. So I guess you can consider everything I've done prior to my Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee tribute photo as season one. And now that I'm implementing in-depth edit portion, I guess this style would uh, be season two. So welcome to season two, y'all. Today's photo that I'll be breaking down is my Captain America portrait style photo. I'm really excited to talk about this photo because portrait photography has been something that I've always loved. And as you'll be able to see this style of photography, I'm really inspired by Annie Leibovitz and I've also pulled from uh, Army of the Dead for this photo. If you haven't seen the movie, there's this quick uh, sequence in the beginning where they're introducing all these badass characters in between these epic scenes it cuts to the character standing in front of a backdrop holding a photo of a loved one it's just so cool before i dive into the edit portion i kind of want to discuss what it took to actually create the scene so i'm gonna do that going into this i knew that i wanted to create something with a backdrop and elements that kind of felt like a studio and that's something that Annie Libovitz does really well with her photos. Instead of it being just straight up backdrop and the subject, she kind of encapsulates everything, even the behind the scene, scenes elements. So you'll see like apple boxes in the background, ladders, you know, the fan with the addition of the backdrop. But you still see all the other elements that took uh, to create the setting. So that's something that I wanted to do for this photo. I went to Michael's, the arts and crafts store, and I was in search of something that could mimic a backdrop for an action figure. I ended up in the leather section and I happened to stumble upon this sheet of leather and it had this nice texture to it. So I was like, this is it. Plus it was the only sheet left. So I was like, I have to take this. And as I was walking around, I actually stumbled upon these wooden boxes. I thought they would be great for an apple box look. What an apple box is, is basically a box that a photographer usually sits on or has their subject sit on or stand on. Those boxes were something that I was like, I think this would be great, a great addition to add to the background. I purchased those and as I immediately got into my car, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So I knew I had to ride the wave as soon as I got home. The first thing I did was I took a photo of Peggy. And for those that don't know, Peggy is Steve Rogers' love interest. So I took a photo of Peggy. I put Peggy in front of a, a black cardboard, took some photos, threw it onto Photoshop, made it black and white, gave it some grain to make it look like an older photo scaled it down to a really small size and printed it out cut it to make it look like an old photo and that photo was going to be what steve was holding similar to army of the dead it was going to be a photo that basically represented what steve's motivation what he was fighting for once i did that i just set up everything and to be honest it was a mess i was dealing with sand I was in the office too because I wanted to make sure that everything was in a controlled environment and I added certain elements just to give it more character. So I put the shield in the background and I put two defeated people in front of Steve in the foreground, kind of gave it more depth as well. And I was super happy with the photo, even unedited. And I think that's a great sign, but I like to edit my photo. So that's where the editing began. So here we have the unedited photo. And like I said, I'm already pleased with how it looks. So anything else is just an icing on the cake. But the first thing that I do with photos like this that really don't require anything crazy as far as compositing goes or adding effects is I play with the curves. Here's the unedited photo. I usually go to image, adjustment and curves. And I'll first play with like the highlights and like the shadows. And then I'll go into the RGBs and then just kind of figure out what I like and what works. Did all of that and I ended up with this. And as you can see, the colors are a little bit different compared to the original photo. There's slight lighting difference. This is where we're at. And from there, I like to add noise to kind of give the photo more 
like texture. So what I do is I go to filter, add noise, and then I usually keep it at 5% because I don't want to go too much because then it looks a little weird. I do, okay. And then with noise, there's a little bit more like grit to it. And then on top of the noise, I'll sharpen the image as well. So I go to filter, sharpen, and then hit sharpen, and then it gets a little bit more crisp. But from there, I kind of look around and I, I see if there's certain elements that need to be fixed. For example, this area right here, the paint job isn't the best. But photos like this, I, I'm... I want to find that balance between it looks very realistic but you're still able to tell it's a toy i kind of decided that i wanted to fix the jacket make it seem kind of seamless remove these like joints right here and kind of clean that up i keep other elements to still make it seem like it's a toy because sometimes you just want to stunt and be like this is a toy but i was still able to make it look fresh you know what i mean so what i did was i used the clone brush tool and kind of fixed those areas so i fixed the shield and i fixed uh the jacket and i ended up with that so you can see the paint job is a little bit better compared to what, what it was before and now the jacket is kind of seamless like i still left like areas around here to be like it's a toy now we have an image that's finding its place and is getting somewhere and like I said, I could be done right now and be happy with it, but I kind of wanted to go that extra mile to kind of just sell it even more. I'm a huge fan of how the light casted the, the shadows on Steve's face. I just wanted to enhance those shadows a little bit more. I used the burn brush tool and I kept it at an 8%. I kind of just like went over the shadows with this tool, shadow, and then put it around the eyes as well the cheek, the neck, the chin, and it ended up to look like that. So there's a slight difference as you can see, but it makes the shadows look a little bit more dramatic. And from afar, I feel like it emphasizes the features on the figure and it makes it look more, more real. And the fact that this is a Marvel legend figure makes me like, makes me happy because it's like Marvel legends are obviously cheaper. The figure looks great in this shot. I love photos like this. It gets me so amped. And now that Steve is pretty much done, as far as edit goes, like fine tuning him, I went on to coloring. So I like the color already that I have by adjusting the curves. But what I did was I adjusted the hue on this photo. So I went to image adjustments, hue and saturation, and I just played uh, with the hue to see if there's something that I liked. And I eventually ended up with this. And as you can see, it's, it's a lot more brown compared to what it was before. It was like a little bit like yellow. Um, but now that brown kind of pops a little bit more. So from here, I'm already amped because the colors are already on point. I realized though that the face may come off a little bit too dark. So I wanted to light up Steve's face just a little bit. So I went into filter, camera raw filter. And then I mess with like the luminosity of colors right here. I brought the yellows up a little bit. And as you can see, it makes the ground and boxes shine a little bit more. And then I mess with the oranges and then the reds just a little bit. So it's a little bit more brighter. Just, just very slightly. I wanted to make it seem like there was an off camera flash on the side. I duplicated the layer. I went to adjustments. Um, then brightness then I brought the brightness down just you know a little bit and then I got the eraser tool I lowered the opacity around 45 I started to erase this side of Steve's of Steve's face just to create that like off-camera flash look and eventually ended up to look like this it's more dramatic and that's the look that I really wanted to go for so like Steve, Steve's face is kind of lit up a little bit more and the photo of Peggy is nicely highlighted as well. And I kind of wanted that to be the focus. From there, I realized I wanted, I saw the highlights on the shield and on the goggles. I went to my brush tools and had my opacity at 54. I just painted over those highlights to have it shine a little bit more and even on the goggles see that little 
shimmer of light kicking in. Lucky enough for this shot uh, with adding those solid colors like I did on my previous photo, I didn't have a lot. I only had one color and that was like a dark reddish color. And I had that on multiply. And from there, that was the final photo. And I really wanted to convey that war portrait style photo and kind of twist in that Annie Leibovitz backdrop vibe and then kind of pulled inspiration from Army of the Dead with the photo. I think this is a style that I want to dive more into just to see where I can take it. If you're ever wanting to try something more simplistic and something that tests you in finding how to capture someone's essence in a photo, I highly suggest portrait photography and see where you can go. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for rocking with me. Um, you guys take it easy. Have a good rest of your day. Peace. Hey.